Joining me now is Susan Collins from King City, and Susan is a dowser. Susan, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. You know, tell us about dowsing. I asked, a, I sort of did a survey, mm -hmm. and I asked a lot of people what dowsing was, and, and absolutely the best I could come up with was a couple of people said, was it where they use that divining rod? And I don't think people really understand what it is. Well, dowsing uh, is an ancient art. It's been used forever by people who are looking for water. So, so the uh, the common image is the uh, the water witcher, or the water dowser, the person that goes out and finds water. Wells, uh, where it's needed, and dowsers today do that, and I do that as well. Here in York Region, uh, a lot of us live in cities and and um, on, more on on urban, urban water. Areas, right. But there's a lot of people who live on farms and uh, more rural properties, and many people in York Region do have wells, and uh, and have well drillers, and uh, I occasionally go out and um, and help find the well. But certainly it's a lot more than that, and that's what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. You say you are a dowsing teacher and an intuitive consultant. What does that mean? Well, uh, intuition is something that we all have, and dowsing is a way of accessing intuition. Uh, the tools that we use are, are pendulums. We, we all we get hunches, you know, you know somebody's going right, to phone. that gut feeling. Yep. The gut feeling, and quite often that's accurate. But we can actually train our bodies by listening to our bodies. Uh, and and increase our accuracy of our intuitions so that your things happen that you expect to happen almost. Dowsing uh, is using tools, and this is a, a pendulum, and it just kind of rolls around in uh, a yes or a no fashion. Um, we use modern dowsers. We don't use the um, the fork stick so much anymore. Uh, we use something called L rods and this is what we look for water with. They move, you, you can ask for a yes or a no or please point to the closest source of water and we must have some water back there kind of thing. Yeah. So it's just a way of developing intuition. And how did you get it? I mean, this isn't something you've done all your life. You, um, you had a whole other career. Well, I was in business and uh, in the corporate world and uh, eventually I got sick doing that. Uh, so I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis about 20 years ago, 20 some years ago, and uh, went the rounds of the doctors and had the cortisone and, uh, and really tried to work through traditional methods to find solutions after the traditional doctors. I went through the naturopaths and homeopaths and tried those systems too. And it wasn't uh, until I went to the library I found a book called Dousing in Your Health pulled it out, didn't know what that was, but it talked about earth energies running through the earth, that if they were running through where you slept or where you sat, uh, would could cause sickness. So, and What do you mean by earth energy, first of all? Well, earth energies, um, we know about magnetism in the earth. Um, the birds, animals migrate along certain energy lines that, that are not well known. Uh, in ancient times in China, there was a, a science called feng shui, which looked at the earth energies. The Chinese call these the dragon's claws. Uh, in northern Europe, this is quite well known. When I visit friends there and I say, oh, I'm, I'm going to douse where to put the bed, and they go, oh, yes, of course, of course you would do that. Uh, so it's, it's quite a common knowledge in Europe and becoming more common uh, here in North America. So the, the Earth energies travel, and I'll, let's go back a sec. Um, when I first read that book and found the Earth energies, and in those days in the afternoon I would lie in a certain place and rest because I was quite ill um, and I couldn't make it through the day without lying down in the afternoon. So I'd, I would lie down and some days the longer I lay down the worse I felt and I just, there's something something wrong. My intuition told me there was something wrong. There must be another, uh, some, must be something else happening. So after I read this book, This Earth Energies, I, I experimented. I, I lay on the one couch and then I moved into a different room, lay on a different couch. And when I lay on the other couch, my energy started coming up. And I went back and my energy fell down and I came back and my energy went up. So that was my aha moment. There's something and I, I didn't know what and was still really trying to figure out how we live in our, our natural world because we're very urban, very sophisticated. We have all these fancy things all around us, but basically we're still connected to the earth with our, our energy. And we tend to underestimate, I think, uh, how strong those earth influences can be. You know, this, with the uh, solar flares that come out and knock out uh, communications and earthquakes and uh, various things. There's huge disruption to our, our technology and we sometimes forget or don't think about the disruptions to our physical bodies as well because we're very fragile um, 
even with you know people talk about the moon uh, and people going a little crazy absolutely lunacy with, full, yep, full with moon, a full moon. We all talk about that. And we're we're mostly water. And in fact, there is there's the moon is affecting the water in our bodies as well. So that that's not dosing so much, but dosing is listening to our bodies in connection to the earth and in the environment, if you will. And you talked about your aha moment, and I, My, I, I know yeah. what you mean by that. You said yeah. you come to that realization. So what did you do at that point? How did you move forward? Well, um, I was fortunate to uh, find the Canadian Society of Dosers, which is a national organization. Um, I'm the president, so, and I knew from the minute I walked in there, you know, that I w had found my home. And I get kind of teary when I, when I think about that almost, because there's, uh, this is a very obscure kind of topic, very esoteric, um, but there was, a, there was a large number of people who are actually working with the earth energies and working with our body energies and trying to find harmony with that. So we have a, a Western group, Canadian Society of Questers, out in BC, there's a group in um, Central Canada, the British Society of Dousers, the American Society of Dousers, and we're working to uh, develop international standards of ethical practice so that when you go to somebody, because what is a douser? Who knows, you know, where, where's your criteria, where's your shingle? Uh, we are working towards developing ethical standards for teachers and practitioners so that there's a commonality of this. So it's not just woo-woo stuff, there's actually uh, an actual science, very subtle science behind it. Uh, in quantum physics, the more that is discovered in some of the very minute uh, particle uh, activities, um, the more similar often it sounds to Eastern philosophy. So it's, it's a kind of parallel right. um, awareness, if you will. So the Dalai Lama talks about um, the Buddhists have really developed the science of the mind. The Western world has developed external science. And uh, the Dalai Lama, who's, who's not a doser, but he's a very intuitive, energetic uh, person, um, is very interested in, in working, bringing these, these two things together. So my passion is bringing this information to a broader audience. So I do offer courses. I, I, I started doing that because I, I started with myself and I kind of fixed my own health up and worked out my circle so of friends. So what did you do? I mean, you, you, you look at you now, you've come so look far. How did, you, how did you do that? <laughs> um, part of it is listening to the body. Um, one of the food is, is one of the things, and I, I brought my little collection of uh, foods here. Uh, sometimes the foods we eat energetically don't support our health. So your last guest talked about promoting wellness before you get sick. And uh, that's kind of what dose we do with dosing as well. Often uh, parents will come to me with, uh, tell me their children are having sleeping problems or behavioral problems or the big purple circles under the eyes. And you can tell with dosing, with your pendulum, which foods are going to support health. And this sounds kind for of crazy. For that person? For that person, yeah. And how yeah. do you tell for that particular person? Well, with, with the dosing. So I can, if, if I could, uh, we come into your energy mm -hmm. field, for example, we are all kind of connected energetically. So I can access, with your permission, I can kind of access your energy field and then check with my pendulum if apples are uh, going to be supporting your health. I'm getting a no on this. So My favorite fruit. <laughs> you know, and often we're attracted to our favorite foods. I had uh, eggplants were my big nemesis. And boy, I, my doctor once asked, how many ways can you cook eggplant? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a kind of a crazy <laughs> thing. We're often attracted to, to the things. Okay. Um, yeah. So oranges would be good. Bananas are not that great for you. And that's another little apple there, too. So it's a very simple, very, very simple technology. People, it sounds so complicated, and people often say, is it really that simple? And, uh, and yes, it is. That was going to be my next question. You talked about the fact you hold classes. I know they're right in King City. Yeah. I think you told me in Snowball. Uh, I'm doing one. Uh, I've, I have a various, various levels of class. The f next introductory class lecture is in Snowball at the Rock of Ages, which is on Wellington, just uh, east of Dufferin. Uh, it's an hour and a half. It's Saturday, December 4th. Um, and in that time, I, it's enough time to get people able to check foods. So we can teach you to dose yes and no and to see which foods will support your health. And people go home from that and I and already, just in an hour and a half, they have tools that help them um, with their health. I can't believe the time has gone so quickly. Yeah. What you have to say is so interesting. <laughs> is there anything else you feel is really important to get out to the people who are watching? It's very simple. Anybody can Good do point. it. 
uh, only your belief system. I, I have friends who say, oh, I couldn't possibly do that. And, uh, and, and we're all out of time. I just can't believe we're all out of time. <laughs> I'm going to come to your lecture. This sounds so interesting. Please and if do. someone wants more information, they can go to your website, www.dowsers.ca. www.dowser.ca. Perfect. Perfect. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Susan. This is so interesting. I'll be there December 4th. Excellent. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this break.